Hey, yo, what is up? I am back after one week and uh, here are the seven things I learned. Uh, but first, uh, this is a battery check. Uh, this thing I've been using for seven days. Uh, it started off with 91% uh, battery life and uh, uh, a couple hours ago it was still in 10% but I decided to charge it so if uh if my calculation is correct i think you can easily game with uh this uh mouse for over a week because i was doing it quite hardcore and at 91 percent seven days with 10 percent left in the tank i think uh, if you go hardcore for 10 uh, for seven days um, in a full charge, I don't think it's going to be a problem. Oh, by the way, I was only using the 1000 hertz um, polling rate. So if you use the 4000 hertz polling rate, I suppose it's going to run down a little bit quicker. But 1000 polling rate, seven days hardcore, no problem. Okay, let's talk about the shape and size. Now the shape and size, if you compare this to the uh, Glorious or the uh, Death Adder, the Death Adder and Glorious is slightly longer. This is slightly shorter and stubbier. It is uh, kind of uh, taller because of that hump over there. And uh, it feels like, you know, it doesn't feel it's better or worse. It just feels different. It fills up my hand differently compared to a Death Adder or a Glorious. Now, I have bigger hands. Uh, my hands are like 21 uh, 0.5 by 10 and this mouse still feels very satisfying to hold so i am enjoying it very much and i have no problems with it now number two is the build quality very solid build uh i did demonstrate to you guys on the first day when i got it i had one creak when i squeezed the live on the camera and uh, it's gone ever since uh, i have no more creaks no more movement i think Maybe I might have released something, uh, you know, when they installed it, they screwed it on and then I might have pressed it and released something. But other than other than that, you know, I, I have no problem with it. The, the build uh, is solid. The shape is sexy. It's, you know, it's cool to look at uh, the branding. The branding is exposed on the side. So even while you're using it, uh, you can see the branding you know that's pretty cool looking actually uh, it's, it's it's a more rounded uh, ergo design uh, very clean looking aesthetically pleasing it looks great on the table just sitting there uh, doing nothing right so pretty cool design the whole thing is white um, the tolerances are tight compared to the old Atlantis uh, this one is very tight tolerances the gaps are closer uh, it's nice and the coating uh, I did something special with the coating if you take a look at it uh, it's you know it's pretty good right it's pretty clean right I've been using this seven seven days straight uh, if I was on my end game gear the white one it would be full of smudges and it would have black spots on the finger where the fingers are going to be there's going to be black spots where my thumb and my fingers rest but here you can see there is there is no black spots anywhere uh, there might be some sweat residue because my, my my hands sweat and perspire a lot it's very clammy it's very watery you can see right here it's like there's there's water on my fingertips so I have very sweaty clammy hands and this thing has held up really well I don't even need to use um, grip tape uh, I, I I mean, this surface is not exactly very grippy, you know what I mean? It's not like the grippiest, but for greasy, sweaty hands, I have no problem hanging on to it. And uh, I'm, I'm really impressed by it, actually. I did not clean this for 7 days, so it is surprisingly very dirt resistant. So what I'm going to do now is actually try to clean it off uh, with a wet wipe. Should I turn it off? I should in case I press something. But I've been meaning to do this for the last week. Oh my god, I wanted to clean it so much. Um, yeah, I'm glad I'm doing this. Let's clean it and have a look at it. Maybe it look like brand new again. 
very satisfying to clean it actually you know most of my peripherals i need to clean it like uh, every two days or three days minimum two days or three days i try to wipe it down every day because uh, you know i like anything other than black so to keep it clean and white i need to keep it you know i i need to have a regimen to keep it clean and so not cleaning this for seven days felt like oh my god what am i doing to my life uh, but I wanted to test out how good it held up, um, you know, keeping the dirt away, keeping the grime away from from my fingers and keep it looking fresh. And it held up really well. I'm really surprised. Uh, like I said, the end game gear does not do as well. You use it for one day and you've got smudges all over the mouse. You use it for three days and you will have black spots on it so that's the difference between the endgame gear xm2we and the lamb zoom mouse in terms of the coating uh, now that being said i prefer the glorious coating the glorious for some reason it's a different coating as you can see it's a different color this is very white this is kind of off white but the off white it has some kind of grip or feeling to it that i cannot explain but it's very nice to hold um, it does get a little bit dirtier I do need to clean it every three days um, uh, the, the Lamzu thorn I don't need to clean it as much as the glorious the glorious does trap dirt a little bit more but this has a slightly nicer coating if I'm you know if I'm being nit nitpicky here but the absolute truth is the Lamzu thorn held up really well in terms of cleanliness keeping it staying white uh, i really like it now the buttons very crispy and uh very snappy uh you can i don't know if you can hear it very crispy very snappy even though they are optical and they are supposedly have heavier clicks uh, the only noticeable difference is they are a bit louder than your regular uh, mechanical switches but compared to other optical switches they are the softest uh, in fact i'm gonna i'm gonna put in a click test for you guys uh, i'll stick it in here this has softer clicks than the uh, g pro super light it has softer clicks than the endgame gear xm2 we go ahead and watch this clip And as for the feet, uh, this is one of the strong suits of the uh, Lamzu Thorn. Um, the stock feet are faster uh, than the stock feet, stock feet of the uh, G Pro Superlight. And this, the G Pro Superlight, in my opinion, the Lamzu Thorn is slightly smoother and, and faster. Um, I mean it's not better or worse it's just a different feeling so don't take that as it is better or, or worse it's just a little bit smoother it's very rounded on the edges you can see so I have no reason to change this out or anything I think it's uh, uh, it's really good it's um, it glides effortlessly on this pad um, the X soft uh, with no scratchy sound that you sometimes get with the G Pro Superlight. With the Superlight, you can hear scratchy sounds when you are swiping across. On the Thorn, there is absolutely um, no sound or very, very minimal sound. So for some reason, it is slightly smoother than the G Pro Superlight V2. Now, I know some manufacturers make their skates very thin. I feel like uh, G Pro Superlight the G Pro Superlight is, you know, very, very thin skates. Um, but the Lamzuthon seems like 
slightly thicker, maybe double, almost 1.5 times or double the size in terms of the thickness of the pads. So I feel like uh, that's the reason why it is kind of like working better on uh, these extra soft um, Hayate Otsu uh, pad. Um, but yeah, the last bit of thing I wanted to speak about was the value for money. This no-brainer, right? $90 or $100 shipped is a no-brainer. Really good deal, very good quality. Uh, I think the, the most important thing is you want to look at the results. How good is this mouse, right? So let me show it to you and we'll cut to the, uh, the screen to see the results on my Kovacs scores. This is the one wall, six targets, uh, small targets. Uh, you know, you, 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 you try to shoot as many of these dots as possible and you know, do it under one minute. You can see my performance here over the last couple of months or six months or whatever with the Pro Max, the Lamzu Atlantis, XM2, WB, Ponage, G Pro Superlight and Thorn. And you can see the Thorn is performing at the highest levels I've ever performed, uh, never dipping below uh, these scores. Uh, so in fact, two or three of the days are my highest scores ever. Uh, you can see some low scores here with the Lamzu Atlantis when I was experimenting with glass feet and um, uh, PTFE dots. It was really terrible here, low performance. And then when I switched back out to the um, PTFE pads, the big fat pads, the scores went up again. So for me, big fat pads work better than glass skates on the Infinity pad. I don't know about the Hayate or two pad, but on the Infinity pad, um, big fat skates work better. So the thorn here, uh, this is on one wall, six targets. Let me show you the, the rest. Uh, this is one wall, six targets. These are bigger targets, but also six targets. You can clearly see an improvement with the thorn here. Very tight grouping in terms of results. Uh, remember, uh, these five scenarios are the five scenarios I play almost every day. And I play uh, just once a day, uh, just to make sure that I don't practice, make sure that I just do it once a day so that I can track if there is any changes when I switch out pads or when I switch out mouses. I want to know how well they perform, uh, you know, without being biased. Uh, just do, I just do these five scenarios once a day. And you can see the thorn is very tight performing, a tight, tight grouping here and performing at one of the best scores I've ever had. Let's look at the third scenario, which is, uh, this one is called fast strafes. This is just tracking um, your target. The target is moving, juking left and right. And as you can see, it is not bad, but it is not very, very good. Uh, it's not the best results. It is just average results in terms of fast strafes. This is uh, your target duking you left and right very quickly and the best results I think the best grouping I got was with the Lamzu Atlantis uh, weirdly with um, glass skates with dots with pads all three were doing pretty well on the Odin Infinity pad so the Infinity pad is a very fast pad I, well I wouldn't say very very fast but on the faster side and then the Lamzu Atlantis uh, very light um, very light mouse with very fast skates seem to be perform performing best for fast strafing. This is tracking a target, you know, a long target. So that was the best result. The Thorn, uh, not the greatest result, but still very respectable. Uh, the next one I want to show you is this one. This is long strafing. Uh, long strafing is tracking your target over a long period. Uh, you can see on the Thorn, I did out of seven days, I had three very high score days. In fact, my highest score was two days ago. And then I had four, uh, I had two pretty, three pretty normal days and one pretty bad day, um, which, you know, I'm not too unhappy about. I got three very good scores here. Uh, on the days that I didn't do very well, you know, I wasn't feeling too well, hands were shaky or whatever, but, uh, there is a marked clear improvement that you can see the graph it's going up so you can't argue with uh, the results right and I think this is the last one this is the 
sandbox intro scenario. Uh, this is just one of the scenarios that, you know, when you when you first get the game, this is just one of the ones that pop up, and this is the one I've been playing the longest. So I can show you, can you, I can show you the results, and you can see that the Thorn GPX a G Pro Super Light 2 it performed better than the G Pro Super Light 2. Now, mind you, the G, G Pro Super Light 2 I also played for one week, uh, and I feel that I will get better if I spend more time with it. Uh, but the Thorn immediately, even though. I also spent one week with it, also went into it blind and uh, did the tests um, or did the scenarios straight away. I'm still getting better results than the G Pro Super Light. Um, you know, maybe it's one of those days, maybe it's just luck, I don't know. But the results are the results, it is what it is. It isn't the best result ever because the best result ever was when I was using the Ponage. Um, and I was using two kinds of pads. I was using the stock pads here, and then I switched out to um, uh, uh, Tiger Ice V2 dots over here, and it still performed pretty good. Overall, I think it's about the same as the Ponage. Uh, one of my best performances. I think, obviously, if I'm going to spend more time with this mouse, I'm going to do better over time. That's how I think anyway. But the results are the results. And um, I hope you found some useful information about the Thorn before you decide whether or not to buy it. Again, if I want to recap back for you, I'm going to say the coating is really good for keeping dirt away. Even though I was using, uh, I'm using a white mouse, it there was no sm visible smudges. Um, I didn't clean it for a week and it was still super white, super clean. Whereas if I was using a white, um, if I was using a white Glorious for a week straight, I would have had to have cleaned it at least three times because it would have been black everywhere. As well as the end Game Gear XM2WE, that one only takes two days to develop dark, dark spots on the um, finger buttons and the side but uh, and the side grips where my thumbs and finger fingers rest it will always have dark spots and then the whole entire mouse will be covered in smudges I mean everybody knows about the uh, end game gear uh, coating it's a very nice coating but it's just not resistance uh, resistant to smudges and fingerprints but anyway yeah that's the end of my video hope you enjoyed this uh, sorry it took 17 minutes to do this uh, but I hope you found some uh, useful information and uh, thank you for watching. I will see you on the next video. Bye-bye.